Hello and welcome to the WB Mason Coaches Report with Hofstra Baseball Coach John Russo. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Thanks for having me. Uh, season ends this past weekend. I know it's disappointing that we didn't make the Colonial Athletic Association Championship, but we battled right to the end that last weekend against UNCW. Might have been three of the three of the best games of the season, especially the doubleheader on Friday. Um, you know, one nothing win. We shut off the the CA leading. Uh, Seahawks, Nick Kozlowski, Brett Schreiber combined on a on a four hitter. Uh, just let's just talk about that first that first game on Friday and you know how knowing that the team needed to really at least get two out of three going into that series. You know how fired up were they and what did you um, how did you motivate them to go into that game? You know we talked about Thursday that uh, we thought two of three on the weekend would be enough for us to to get into a tournament and um, you know so I had to look at it. Like, just in case we didn't get two or three, we needed to sweep. How was the best possible way of doing that? And we've been doing Verbitsky in game one. And, you know, I felt if, you know, if Brian had lost game one, it would lose a lot of hope. It would be tough. And um, But I thought Nick Kozlowski could really give us some game one fire. We've seen him throw a couple big games this year. He threw really well against Delaware on Sunday. And, you know, throw him really well out of relief. And, uh, you know, I thought if he could get us five to six innings and then, you know, Brett Schreiber could come in and finish that game and then win that game and then have game two with Verbitsky on the hill would be best case scenario for us. And, and you know, Nick Kozlowski just delivered. And, um, you know, great stuff. He Two hits, I believe it was, in five innings. He had a great start for us. He just sold out. And, um, you know, and then Brett Schreiber came in and you know, has been as good a pitcher in the CAA in the last few weeks and, and maybe all season except for one or two four outings and uh, shut them down for four innings and, and got us a big you know, one nothing win and gave us the momentum going into game two. You know, it was a, a classic pitcher's duel as UNCW's Matt Batts, who ended up being the CA Pitcher of the Year. You know, they really kind of Kozlowski matched Matt Zeros and it was that one run, you know, that came in on a, on a single and I think believe the sixth inning that, that really, that was the difference. So moving on to game two of that doubleheader, you start Brian Verbitsky and he really brought his A game, carried no hitter through five innings. Lost it leading in the, with the leadoff bat in the sixth, but you know again another great start and and real bullpen relief from John Tiedemann to to get that five one win, um, which really had you know really have your hopes buoyed going into you know Saturday, which you know was uh, was a game that you know kept us in playoff contention right there until the very last moment. You know again Verbisky, we've talked about him, you know the scouts and. You know where he might go in the draft this year and all that, but you know as a starter, you know obviously this probably was his best outing as a starter. Definitely, you know um, the one thing I thought was um, when you win a one nothing game like that, uh, Wilmington really just uh, never threatened too much. You know even didn't have too much of a chance of scoring that game one. I told Brian that I thought that you know when that happens you get into a little bit of a slump. So I told him to just go after him as hard as he could for as long as he could, and we had enough bullpen. To, to get the rest of the way home, I thought. And, uh, you know, he went out there for six innings. I, I think he had a no-hitter through uh, six innings, or through the first five. And and then Conley hits a home run off him, and then he had first and third no outs. And, you know, he got a strikeout and got out of that uh, inning without giving up any runs with first and third no outs. And, you know, I thought that was the biggest part of the game. And, you know, and then Tiedemann came in the last three and, you know, threw as good, you know, as he had been all season. And I, I thought the last three weeks he's just thrown great. and. You know, it was a John Tiedemann of uh, last year, and you know, a huge win. And um, you know, we scored four runs off a of kid Jordan Ramsey, who came in, you know, at the time um, having under a two ERA, and you know, um, he, I think he ended up being third team All Conference, and you know, beating two two good conference pitchers, probably as good as there is in the country, and then to beat a, a top thirty team twice in uh, one day is a, a good day in, in Hofstra baseball for sure. Now um, move to to the finale of the series and what turned out to be the season finale. You go into that game knowing that you need a win or a JMU loss to qualify. Really, the team showed a lot of heart and great in that game fell behind 9-4 going into the late innings and then mounted a furious comeback to tie it up at uh, 10 going into the in, in the bottom of the ninth, in the ninth inning. You know, just let's you know, big home runs from Kenny Jackson and Brian Verbitsky, you know, some clutch hits, some, you know, a whole, you know, a lot of, a lot of different things, you know, all baseball, kind of baseball plays that, that work 
worked out with you know really that was the epitome of, of the grit and, and heart that the team showed all season. So I know even though it ended up being an extra inning loss, I mean you have to take some solace in, in the way the team played from that in that game. Definitely, I, I think you're hundred percent right. It, it showed every characteristic that we had of the whole season, overcoming adversity, uh, uh, you know, toughness, uh, never quitting. Um, you know, we got down. Uh, we had talked before the game. I, I really, you know, a bad thing that happened for us was that Delaware clinched uh, third place, so they didn't really have much to play for against JMU, and you know, they could get ready for the conference tournament with their pitching. So I, I didn't assume their pitching was going to go very long, and it didn't. And um, you know, JMU was able to pull out a pretty easy win against Delaware. So we kind of knew we had to sweep uh, Wilmington to beat them, and then. You know, to get down 7-2 and I think down 9, you know, I think 9-4 and, you know, I don't think many people would have gave us a chance and, and then they brought in, you know, Seacrest, their closer, which they didn't use the day before and he ended up being first team all CAA and, you know, we put up five runs off of him, a three-run homer from Kenny Jackson, a two-run homer from Babitsky and then able to tie it in the bottom of the ninth and had a really good chance to win in the bottom of the ninth and even in the tenth inning, you know, we got a leadoff guy on and then a double play ball and, and two outs, nobody on, and we still got the winning runs to second and third with Matt Wright setter up, who had a, you know, a line drive that if the guy wasn't playing so shallow to throw the guy at the plate, he, he might not catch. And, you know, that that's the epitome of the season. And, you know, it's very disheartening to lose by a half game and not make the tournament, but to not look at all the great things we did this year would be wrong. Now, you know, some of those those highlights this year, you talked about Matt Rice and with that line out, but you know, really had a breakout offensive season. He's always been, you know, great defensive catcher and a, and a steady offensive player. You know, he made All Conference in, in each of his first two years, a third team, a second team. This year, he breaks through, hits 3.26 on the year, really carried you through the month of April, and you know, probably our, one of the hottest bats in, in of, the, of the team. You know, during that stretch, and. Uh, you know, he made first team all conference, which was announced last night at the awards banquet. It's the first first team honor of his career. You know, with him coming back next year, you have a good nucleus of, of position players and and you know, some pitchers as well coming back. But you know, let's talk about Matt's play this year. You know, I mean Matt's uh, you know, had a great career so far. His third team is freshman year, his second team is sophomore year, now first team is his junior year and, and that's that's steady progress of growing up. We've always thought Matt was a great hitter. He just um, hadn't had a chance to show it, and then this year he finally put it all together. And you know, I think next year there's no telling how much better Matt could get. I mean, you know, now he's done first team. I guess that would be another goal of his. But to you know, try to maybe be an All-American, I think wouldn't think would be out of the question for Matt. And you know, Matt just keeps um, progressing like he has these first three years. The you know limit for him is is uh, you know, he has no real limit to how far he could take his abilities and. I hope one day he gets a chance to play at the next level. I, I really think with his catch and throw and now that how well he's proved the hit, it's uh, something he'll deserve and, and get a chance to do. And, um, you know, super excited to, to have a chance to maybe have him back next year. Now, another another player, another, you know, good year for you was Kenny Jackson, another junior, led the team nine home runs, you know, over 30 RBIs. And he's, he really, you know, he moved around a lot in the order. You know, again, early on in the season, he was one of the hottest hitters, cooled off a little bit, but then picked it back up at the end. I know you moved him around, he was hitting fifth and third. Now, the last week or two, he was hitting the, in the leadoff spot, and, you know, he really pretty much produced wherever you, wherever you hit him. You know, what do you see for him coming back for his senior year? You know, I think Kenny had an invaluable year because he was the focal point. As much as Matt, you know, won first team all conference and was really good, I thought Kenny Jackson was the you know, the guy, the other team said, we can't let this guy beat us. And, uh, you know, with Dalton and uh, Matt Ford going down with injuries, I don't think Kenny would have probably gotten that. Uh, and with Hammer being in the lineup, I don't think, you know, Kenny would have gotten that moniker. And, um, you know, now he has a whole year of being that guy, which he might not have been till last year as a senior year. So he got to, you know, be pitched tough. He got to be pitched around. He got, you know, every game he was the guy the other team tried to get out. and. You know, now coming into his senior year, he's already done that for a year. So this is this whole uh, spring was invaluable to him, and you know I think it really sets him up to have a, a big senior year. Now that he already felt the pressure, he probably wouldn't have felt the last year, with, but because of those injuries, it was really valuable to him. Okay, and just to to wrap things up, you know, 2013 
26 and 27 was the record. 60 wins the last two years, the most in, in program history for back-to-back -back years. Team is positioned well going forward. I know that's been a, been a goal of yours is to not just have you know one good year, two good years, but to, to maintain. Where, where do you see the future of the program going? You know, I, I think um, you know, we're really going to miss the senior class. We, you know, we got uh, 12 good kids moving on that you know, really helped change the, the culture and the atmosphere of, of Hofstra baseball. But you know, one of my goals, like you said, was to also be good the next two, three, four years to never really have a down year. And um, you know, with uh, Dalton, Rulos, and Matt Ford's injury this year, it definitely hurt you know, this season's teams, but it helps next year's club tremendously. And, you know, those are two additions we weren't planning on, and we already thought we were going to be pretty good going into it. So, um, you know, I think the, the future of Hofstra baseball is very bright. Um, I think it's a, a tradition now here. If we can do it one more year, we can, you know, not be a one-year wonder, uh, you know, a two-year fluke or whatever. And, you know, I think I have big goals for next season, and, uh, you know, I think with the team we have coming in and the, the guys we are returning, you know, we'll be able to reach those goals. All right. Coach, congratulations on, on, a, on a good season. I know, like I said, it wasn't what you would hope for, but, you know, the team battled back from, from a rough start and, and played well in the year and never gave up and never quit. So, you know, take some, some satisfaction in that and moving forward, we look forward to, to bigger and better things. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Thank you. And you've been watching the W.B. Mason Coach Report on GoHofter.com.